I just finished Star Wars Clone Wars season seven, the final episode. I am so happy that this show finally has a proper ending to it. Sorry, it is two in the morning. I am extremely tired and delirious because, you know, it's two in the morning, but, you know. Anyway, uh, I just watched the final episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars, so here's the thing. I guess it premiered at midnight. I'm not exactly sure. All I know is it was going to premiere today, which is May the 4th, in fact, and I went online to see if it was up, and it was. So I watched it at two in the morning. Yeah, my sleep schedule's completely fine. Um, but anyway, that is beside the point. What I am here to talk about is the final season of Star Wars The Clone Wars, which I can say is a pretty middle ground season. Overall, season is pretty decent. With it originally supposed... So, season seven was originally supposed to consist of the final three arcs to season six. At least that's to my knowledge, because... Uh, when they made season six, they only got the 12 episodes out. But so, uh, the three arcs that we got for this, uh, for season seven, were uh, the Bad Batch arc, what I'm gonna call Ahsoka's, like, Ahsoka's personal arc, and then the final arc. Uh, the Bad Batch arc follows Rex as he realizes that plans the Separatists are using were ones that him and Echo came up with, which... A lot of characters are like, hey, that's just coincidence because Echo's dead. And he's like, yeah, I know, but I can't shake this feeling that he's not. And so they go to like, so um, he basically convinces Anakin to help him figure out what the heck is going on. Um, and they end up getting help from the clone group known as the Bad Batch, uh, a group of clones that have been specifically genetically modified to um, basically work in specific ways. Uh, you have the leader hunter who his modification is basically he's able to like genetically um, basically go into a computer room and like just sense the energy and like be able to accurately pull up a battle map in his head which is 100% accurate at all times like better than a hologram which if this works, why do you not give this ability to every clone? That makes no sense to me. Just give it to all of them. And you've also got uh, the sharpshooter, whose name I can't remember, Tech, and Wrecker. Uh, Wrecker is basically the big, dumb idiot. Uh, Tech is, like, the smartest one. He, he, is, like, he basically has glasses in his face, but he's so freaking intelligent that he was able to pull up a translation for an alien species that none of them had ever met and like speak it to them the first time he tried it which is great uh that whole arc goes how you expect they end up saving echo and then echo chooses to join the bad batch which officially makes the bad batch my personal favorite trope of all time the five-man band yes is the greatest thing Woohoo! i am sorry the, the Five Man Band is like my favorite trope, I think, just because I ended up watching a number of shows with the Five Man Band trope when I was a kid. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a perfect example of it. The Power Rangers are a great example of the Five Man Band, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, like, I just I guess because I just watched a ton of shows with that trope in it, like, using that structure, that it just became, like, my favorite trope of all time. Sorry, got a little sidetracked there. That is not what I am, that is not the important bit. That is not what I'm talking to you about. Second arc of the final season basically follows Ahsoka as she meets these two sisters who live on the lower levels of Coruscant. And their entire thing is that they are just trying to get by. They're trying to make them enough money to get out of the rat hole that they find themselves in so that they can pretty much, you know, survive and make it on their own. Um, as it turns out, they're orphaned because their parents died it towards the beginning of the war, because of Zero. The art, the final like, the final um, two episodes of the first season of Clone Wars, when you meet, uh, basically, uh, when Zero is getting freed from prison and all that, when he like, uh, when they ended up accidentally crashing one of the star cruisers into one of the hyperspace lanes. Apparently, these two sisters, their uh, parents lived outside, like, right on the other side. The family lived right outside the hyperspace lane, and it crashed directly into it, killing the parents 
um, and the sisters manage to get out. So they don't like the Jedi. So the entire arc is really, really cool because like it's going through and it's like Ahsoka basically having to hide the fact that she's a Jedi because she's actually ashamed of it. She doesn't want to reveal it to these people that she actually likes a little bit. Um, and at this point, remember, she has left the Order. So like she doesn't consider herself a Jedi anymore. And so like her basically, um, I don't know. It was really amazing for like her to go and like interact with people who dislike the Jedi just because of like what happened to them. It was really awesome. <sighs> but then the final arc, oh, it's probably, no, not even probably. It is the best arc of the entire series. Hands down, full stop. I am not going to, no, you cannot argue this with me. It is the best arc. It is the greatest one. It, oh my God. It literally shows the final movie from Ahsoka's perspective. It is one of the best things ever to happen. It is amazing, and I love it, and it is great, and it will never not be awesome. Uh, okay, so, explaining what happened. Um, basically, what, ends up, what ended up occurring is, um, at the end of Ahsoka's, like, four-episode journey with the Spice Running Sisters, uh, she ends up running into uh, Satine's sister, the Death Watch one of the Prey Vizsla's Death Watch members who hates Maul for killing her and for killing Prey Vizsla and her sister and like taking over Mandalore because of it. So she basically is like, "Help, hey Jedi! Uh, so Maul's on this planet. Help us capture him, and you can have him." And they're like, "Cool, that's a great idea." And then Anakin and Obi Wan get the call. It's like, "Hey, so uh, the Chancellor's been taken by Grievous. We need you guys here to help us." And they're like, "Shit." We, uh, we're gonna have to do that. Uh, hey, I, and Anakin's like, hey, I have an idea. Let's give a detachment of clones to Ahsoka and she can go to Mandalore and help them. And Obi-Wan's like, hmm, but she's not a part of the enemy. He's like, fine, we'll make Rex commander and then give him the command and she can tag along as a consultant. He's like, that'll work. And so they go to Mandalore, they capture them all, and then Order 66 is given as they're on their way to Coruscant. And so the final two episodes are Ahsoka fighting away off the ship with Rex because they don't want to kill anyone and it's amazing. Oh my god! I love it so much. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not I'm not not biased towards this series season at, at all. No, no, I'm not I'm not biased. Is oh, so what they do with the final four episodes is the way that they're presented comes off as its own movie as opposed to an arc of a show. Like, it does, does that make sense? The way that it gets presented is Ahsoka's perspective, but each episode ends on like a cliffhanger that will keep you hooked for next episode. But the thing is, none of the episodes start the way that every other episode of Clone Wars has started. They don't start with a quick, here's the setup to get you in. They go right into the story and they end and it leads perfectly into the next one. Like, you could have released these four episodes as a, its own singular movie, and I would have loved it. Like, it works so well. Like, this is the Clone Wars movie that we should have got instead of the Clone Wars movie. Um, that being 2008 movie Clone Wars that predated the clone, uh, that predated Clone Wars as a show. It's basically the first episode, and... <laughs> is not that good it's pretty much leads to the worst arc of the show uh i am not a fan of zero i am however a fan of the bounty hunter that frees him whose name i cannot for the life of me remember um but i'll get into that later at some point anyway um but you basically but oh my god the final four episodes make up for every misstep that the season had up to this point it's so goddamn good. Like, the biggest misstep in this season was when Ahsoka was with the sisters. They aren't bad characters by any means. They're really, really good. They're actually really great characters. It's that it felt like they were trying to force character development onto Ahsoka rather than letting her, like, naturally evolve, almost. I don't know. It's slightly hard to explain because some of her actions felt forced despite... that. That was kind of me, but... The way she acts in these final four episodes 
are so perfect for her character. She refuses to kill men that are actively trying to kill her because she has fought with them and she believes them to be good soldiers. She like straight up refuses to let herself kill them. She refuses to let Rex kill them. She refuses to surrender to them because it could get pretty much everyone killed. It, it's a great moment and was perfect for her character. And oh, the way the season ends, I'm not going to spoil the way the season ends for the most, like, the very final shot of the season. It is perfectly brilliant. There's, like, almost no dialogue in it. It is one of the greatest mirror shots I have ever seen, and I loved it so much. It was the perfect way to wrap up the show, in my opinion. Um, and as you can tell, I'm a massive Star Wars fan, and Clone Wars is one of my favorite cartoons from when I was a child. Meaning, I have zero biases about this at all whatsoever. I am totally making this clear-minded, too. No, but really... Okay, my personal bias towards Clone Wars aside, I was probably going to like whatever final bits they came up with. But seeing Order 66 being given from another perspective, from the perspective of someone who is like, holy shit, but doesn't want to kill anyone, is... I loved it. I loved seeing it from Ahsoka's perspective. And it just... It added so much to her character. It felt like she actually was her. She didn't feel too different from how she was. I know that doesn't make a ton of sense, but, like, I don't want to get into too much spoilers if you guys haven't seen it. I plan on doing a full and proper review for the final four episodes of Clone Wars eventually. Just... Huh, they're so goddamn good. I have to say that overall the final season of Clone Wars is the best season that we've gotten so far, if only for the final four episodes. I, as much as I love the Bad Batch arc, unfortunately they're not in it enough to truly be amazing characters that everyone is going to remember. I will remember the Bad Batch for the rest of time because, again, trope of the five-man band, that is my favorite thing, but... I understand if people don't remember them. I can understand people disliking the Spice Running arc a little bit, uh, because that doesn't do a ton, but I enjoyed it overall, and it gave personal growth to Ahsoka overall, which I personally love. And then the final four episodes with the Siege of Mandalore and seeing Order 66 be given out and done by the clones from Ahsoka's perspective and how it affected her, I thought was a perfect way to end the show, and it was so so much fun to watch overall. For me, with everything in consideration, the final season of Clone Wars rolls a 19. Not perfect, but so fucking enjoyable, especially with the final arc of the show, that I'm gonna keep going back to it. Even if I don't go back to the rest of the show, which I will eventually do, it's one of my favorites, I love it so much, but the final four, hmm. Yeah, with everything, it's just... I thought it was amazing, and if you haven't seen it for whatever reason and you're a fan of Star Wars, go watch it now. It is well, well, well worth your time. Yeah, that's all that I have for you now, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please, you know, like, comment, all that jazz. If you like the content that I put out on this channel and you would like to continue to follow me, please hit the subscription button down below. If you would like to see more videos in the vein of this, uh, what I call my critical reviews, you can click the playlist right here. If you'd like to see another Star Wars video, specifically on why I do not believe that The Last Jedi is that bad of a film, you can click right here. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, links to both of those are going to be in the description down below as always. And that's all I have for now. So, I hope that you guys have a great day. Don't forget to love each other, and as always guys, peace out.